by now you've probably come across this video already. And at first you might think, why is this boring video getting so much attention? But then you read the title and realize that none of this is real. Nothing is real. It could be like a video game. Now made by Lorenzo, and I don't mean our Lorenzo, but an artist from Italy who recreated a train station from Toyama, Japan in Unreal Engine 5. Now he worked about a month on it. We are going to try and recreate it in two days. Now we are with three people, so that actually makes it six days, but still a challenge. The first thing that Janik did was making an outline of the level using simple shapes. I recommend locating the place actors window and then click on geometries. Now if you take a cube, you can define its size from the details panel. These are in centimeters so that makes it easy to set the size of the different buildings and objects. And for the people from the US there's like a small extra step, learn the metric system. That's right. The metric system. We then copied Janik's project and everyone started working on something different in this layout. And since we only got two days, we built the entire train station with assets from the Quixel library. So that means we don't have to model a thing. Now if you click on the add button in a content browser, you can choose to add Quixel content. This is a library filled with thousands of 3D assets, materials and foliage. All for free. It's, it's absolutely insane guys. And to add another spoon of sugar to the tea, this is a photorealistic library. That means that these assets were created by scanning real life objects, giving you super realistic stuff, which is exactly what we need. Now, the only downside is that you can't really find the right things in there, you know, like the electricity beams that span over the rail tracks, you know, those cable things. So I had to make those myself. I found this old hydraulic mining prop, which was a good base to start off. I extended that with some concrete poles, which I gave a rotation offset so that you don't see the Petition. So now it was just a matter of building such a beam from various assets. It's like Legos. I eventually had something like this, which was already a day of work. All right. To connect the cables, I needed these things right here, no idea what they're called. I basically made them from a bicycle stand and a rusty chain. Definitely that chain didn't make much sense, but I liked the shape it had. So I simply slapped a rubber material on it and it was perfect. Now speaking of perfect, our Unreal Engine 5 class for beginners has been online now for a couple of months. Thousands of students have already taken the class and the reviews have been overwhelmingly positive. As we've put so much effort into bringing a unique class that focuses on filmmaking, or the VFX aspect of Unreal Engine, it feels so good to read these reviews. You'll start off by learning how to create realistic environments and setting up natural light. In the second half of the class, we're gonna build an interior scene and learn everything about animation and light fixtures. And by the end, we'll even explore real-time green keying as well as other virtual production techniques like even controlling lights through DMX. And the great thing is that we have this class hosted on Skillshare and with an active subscription, you can actually watch all of our classes or any class on their website. New classes are being added every day and we are currently working on a new one as well. More information about that very soon. So I can highly recommend to sign up for Skillshare and I can actually give new students one month completely for free. After that, it's a very small fee per month. So investing in yourself is super important and the best place to start is at Skillshare. So go click the first link in the description down below for all the information. Now, one of the most important things to making a realistic scene are imperfections. Something as simple as a wall should not be a rectangle with a concrete material on it. You know, I found these ceiling beams, which I upscaled and rotated upside down. As you can see, these are not perfectly straight, making them much more realistic than this. And once you're done with building something, you'll notice that everything looks pretty clean. Like, too clean. And that's where decals comes in. You can find these in the Quixel library as well. And basically, these are projections of something like a leakage. Pay attention to this blue arrow, which is the direction of that projection. Now, putting these on the roof, for instance, makes it much more natural. However, decals are flat and you'll also find things like pebbles and stuff like that in the decal format, which I do not recommend. Definitely not for close by stuff as you will notice that they are flat. So only use decals of things that should be flat like leakages, signs or paint or whatever. Now if you do like some pebbles or anything else to give more character to the scene, you should download these as 3D assets. Now you can find all sorts of small rocks, bricks or stuff like that. And before you say, Jordy, ain't nobody got time for that, don't worry, you can actually 
actually paint your pebbles. It's like a spray can filled with bricks and rocks. So on top, change the mode to foliage. And now you want to select all the rocks and stuff that you downloaded and drag them into here. Then select them and on the bottom you'll have some more options to create variations. Like the scale has to be a minimum of 1 and a maximum of 2. As you paint these rocks now, they will have a random scale between these two values. With the paint tool selected, choose your desired brush size and density and simply start painting. And yes, you can do this with everything, even with this massive staircase. Now for the fine artists among us, you can also pick the single tool to lay down a single pebble at a specifically chosen spot. Now I mostly did it that way as well with the patches of grass in between the train rails, otherwise the grass might be placed on top of a rail, which doesn't make much sense. You know, Unreal Engine is also a bit like gardening. Now sometimes you'll run into this issue where you find a very nice 3D model, but it needs some editing, like add a window in there. Well, Genig actually found a way to do that. The first thing you need to do is enable the plugin for modeling. Then we need two static meshes, of course the wall from Quixel Bridge and a basic shape in the shape of your window. Once you have your two static meshes, select them both and go to the modeling mode on top. Now our modeling window will appear and we click on mesh bool. We have to wait so it can process, but once finished you can see a hole. Or maybe not. If not, just play around with your settings. The main one is operation. Here you can choose if you want to cut out A from B or B from A. And that's it. That was very nice of Janik. Now, the train station is done. Now comes the camera animation. And we've covered that multiple times already on the channel, so I won't go into details. But basically, we used the VCam app, which allows you to control a virtual camera. I could even stand in the studio to have enough room to walk around in the virtual world. The great thing about Unreal Engine is that you don't record your scene, but only the camera movement. So that means that you could still change anything about your scene. And now you're probably curious to see the end result. So without further ado, here it is. Now, if you enjoyed the video, guys, leave a like, which really helps this video to perform better on YouTube. And thus, you're supporting the channel, so thank you so much for doing that. And if it tickles to learn more about Unreal Engine, definitely check out our class. Again, link can be found in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, stay creative. Now, check out the video here on my left, which is very nice as well, and I'll see you guys next week.